A November chill hangs in the air at the Sidling Hill Creek Preserve in Western Maryland. The first rays of light kiss the land, foreshadowing what's to come. Today, the nonprofit Nature Conservancy and its partners are looking to put some fire on the mountain. Good morning, everyone. My name's Gabe Cahalan. I work for the Nature Conservancy. I'll be the burn boss for today. Our objectives are to have a light burn, clear the leaf litter, and provide more room for some of the rare plants that occur on the shale barren. Fire is a natural process, just like rain. We've always had fire, and we always will have fire. And we're very, very careful about how we do this and where we do it. Nature Conservancy ecologist Deborah Landau is here to make sure the burn is safe and controlled. The Maryland Department of Natural Resources and the U.S. Forest Service are also part of the burn team. When you have this heat pulse through the area, it can actually stimulate many of the rare native plants to germinate. It also releases nitrogen into the ground, so it's almost like a fertilizer boost for many of the plant communities here. So by bringing fire back to this mountainside, you're gonna make the entire forest healthier and more resilient. In the last century, fire has been looked at as something to prevent to avoid death and destruction of property. But without fire, flammable materials build up, and when the weather gets hot and dry, they create a much larger problem. So now when we do have a wildfire, they can be catastrophic. They're hotter and more intense than they should be. So by doing these control burns under very careful weather parameters, we can have the benefits of the fire, a light burn that will burn up these fuels, the leaves and the grasses and the branches, but not too hot so as to damage the fire-adapted plant communities. Well, the process starts actually years before, we, before today when we're actually gonna burn it. It begins with a burn plan that lays out the exact circumstances that must be met to ensure the fire can be contained. A test fire gets things going. Safety is the biggest issue when you're lighting fire. Come on, Don, Jesse, you're looking good. Gabe will first have to inspect the test fire to make sure the weather prescription of air temperature, wind speed and direction, and humidity are at the right levels to begin the main burn. What is it, Jason? You gonna burn? Oh, it certainly feels damp. It's got to be just right, and so far, conditions seem ideal. This is generally what you'll see in hardwood litter, is very low uh, flame lengths. Uh, slow creeping fire. We're also looking to see that the smoke is going up and dispersing versus laying down on the ground. And we are seeing that here. Gabe gives the okay for the bigger burn, starting the natural process of fire and rebirth. We know that we're helping out the plants and animals here. We get to all work together um, outdoors. It's just a great, great feeling. But for those who don't know what's going on, the sight of smoke on the mountains can be alarming. So what we're doing today is across the road, we'll have a little table set up where people can safely observe the burn. So okay. what do you think of the fire? And while they're there, they can learn about the importance of fire ecology and all the benefits of returning fire to the landscape. While some people just happened upon the burn, Marie Miller made it a point to bring her students out to give them a first-hand look at forest management. Did they make any brush piles for this fire? Oh, no. Oh, no. no. It's always great for students to see management happening on the ground because we learn a lot about planning and, and how things could be, but to see something actually happening, I think this is really great for them. Over the course of the day, the controlled burn works its healing powers on 60 acres of the preserve. 
The fire went well. Uh, it carried really nicely through the oak litter and um, we had no issues today. Now for the most crucial part of the process, ensuring these creeping flames are safely extinguished. Now we'll put it into what we call patrol status. So we'll be patrolling it um, on a regular basis until it's completely out. As I'm going down, I'm gonna be looking for areas that are still smoking, still smoldering. When I come back up, those are the areas I'm gonna focus on. We wanna get that cleaned up about 20 to 30 feet in, just so we don't have a hazard of overnight of the fire escaping outside of the burn area. We wanna get that what we call mopped up. So right here, we've got some smoldering at the base of this tree. We're gonna to wanna to make sure we come back later on and, and check that area. We're gonna dig up the leaf litter, dig up the duff around that area, wet it down, cool it down until we feel safe of leaving that area. This is the most important part because if you don't, if you don't mop up well, uh, if something should happen and for some reason a control line should fail or like this snag would fall and go across your line, then you could potentially be into a wildfire situation. One species that demands this long overdue fire is a gnarled native conifer known as the Table Mountain Pine. Flames coax open its cones, allowing seeds to escape. Yeah, so here's, here's a Table Mountain Pine cone. It has these sharp points on it. So the fire actually um, provides a good seed bed. And in fact, you can see right here, There's a Table Mountain pine cone. So we expect to see uh, Table Mountain pine regeneration on this hillside um, from the burn. In just seven months, there are some dramatic changes. So there really are Table Mountain pine seedlings coming up directly under the Table Mountain pine. We've got pine cones that have opened up and two pine seedlings, which is exactly what we were hoping to get. And it's really exciting to see how quickly they return on their own when all we've done is brought fire back. I'm admiring the effects of this control burn and how good it looks on our burn side. Right on the fire line, you can see how on the unburnt side, you still have a lot of leaf litter and a lot of downed trees and branches. And on the burn side, you see this flush of regrowth. There's green, there's a diversity of different plants coming in. And with diversity comes a healthier and hardier forest, one that will be better adapted to the more extreme conditions that climate change will bring. We expect to see longer periods of severe drought. By bringing fire back into the landscape, we're encouraging the fire-adapted trees and species to come back and to thrive. And those fire-adapted species are also much more drought resilient. They have long tap roots and they're well insulated by thick bark. The entire landscape will be more resilient and less susceptible to diseases and other stressors that come with those droughts. And as temperatures rise, scientists expect animals living in the southern U.S. will need to migrate to cooler and more elevated parts of the country. The Appalachian Mountains are like a super highway of species migration where they not only can move northward, but there's also topography so they can move up in elevation. So you have exactly what you need for these species as they're bumping forward in light of climate change. As they rejuvenate the forest and enable biodiversity, prescribed burns may have another benefit. Frostburg University professor Rebecca Taylor is studying how burning dark and moist leaf litter might help control a scourge of the forest, Lyme disease carrying deer ticks. Ticks are a vector for pathogen spread. And throughout the spring and the summer, you're gonna see these black-legged deer tick nymphs. They're about anywhere between the size of a poppy seed and a sesame seed. And those are the ones that actually cause the most cases of Lyme because they're small and people don't see them as well. So the idea is that controlled burns may be a way to not only improve the health of the forest, 
but to uh, ameliorate tick populations. And Rebecca hopes to prove that using her low-tech but effective research technique. Well, I don't usually get excited to find nothing, but that's exactly what's here. I don't see any ticks on this cloth, which is a good thing because it means that potentially there, there is no tick population here. And this area of the forest was burned, so hopefully we eliminated the tick population. Reintroducing fire to the landscape is an intersection of so many different factors. And we're making this a more comfortable place for people to come and enjoy. Returning fire to this rugged landscape is proof not only that the forest can take the heat, but that it is stronger for it. <laughs>